I'm building a new tool to be able to better test keyboards and mice, and if you are or know a peripherals reviewer, I could use your help. I'm pretty far along with this thing. I've added all of the features and tests that I can think of and that I want for my reviews, but I'm far from an expert keyboard and mouse reviewer, so I'm hoping that you can give me some suggestions and advice about what you would like to see this thing do. Let me explain what's going on here, although to be clear this is all still very much in the prototype stages. Everything you see here is not final, it's just working well enough for me to show you a bit about how it works, what it will eventually do, and then from there you might have half a chance of helping me out. First, why do I want a tool to test peripherals? Well, pretty much like the response time tool, I'm a little tired of saying, well it feels good enough to the eye and it feels decent, I want to be able to tell you how good empirically one keyboard or mouse is from another. And specifically for Hall Effect keyboards, I want to be able to tell you how accurate the actuation points are, what the latency is like even more repeatably than the latency tool, and I want to be able to produce force curves for every and any switch. If I'm being honest, the design of this thing is very much a keyboard tool that should be able to do mouse testing, as mice have a whole different set of test parameters, so maybe if people have an idea for how to make that better, that would be very helpful. Anyway, let me walk you through the design. Physically, what we've got here is basically a, a linear actuator on a stand. The stand is purposefully low profile at the bottom to be able to slide under your keyboard and for sort of added stability. And I've made sure that it's as rigid as possible with as little deflection as possible for, well, be the, the best and most realistic force measurements. Realistically though, for a maximum of like 80 grams of switch force, rigidity isn't exactly the end of the world, but I figure if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Anyway, the linear actuator is mounted vertically above where the switch would go, and it's on a riser to be able to reach into at least halfway into most keyboards, so you can basically test any switch you want. On the end of the linear actuator is a 200 gram load cell, which offers excellent accuracy for measuring the force, and also effectively acts as a contact sensor to let the tool know when it has well, made contact with the switch. There's a little extender on the end to help you into sort of like reaching into switches without pressing all of them around, and the load cell is purposefully in line with the travel of the linear actuator too. There is also a travel limiter on the load cell mount so that if for some reason the motor presses on the load cell too hard, it can't deform and break the load cell. One thing I wanted to be able to monitor was the absolute position of the linear actuator, because both of these have a bit of slop in them. And because I'd prefer to rely on absolute truth readings rather than just benchmarked approximations, at least where possible, what I've essentially done is turn a 10 pound linear actuator into a 200 pound one with a little magnet and this Hall effect sensor. This is a single axis HE sensor and since the casing is aluminium and plastic, the two tiny little magnets that I've glued to the plastic sort of moving block inside here show up as a strength signal from the sensor. It is non-linear, which is a little annoying, but basically the idea is to store a map uh, from top to bottom of the travel of the linear actuator in the onboard flash, and then be able to use that as a sort of lookup table to find the relative position of the arm. I still have some tweaks to do from that, adding some gain resistors to the op-amp circuit to give more sensitivity and accuracy for sure, but still, I love designing like cheap and slightly bodgy workarounds to solve problems. There are already some things that I want to improve with this design. I guess somewhat aesthetically, like having the load cell wire is soldered directly to the PCB rather than these sort of kind of dodgy wire extensions, possibly reworking the HE sensor position to also be attached to the PCB directly and fed through the case, and shortening the motor wiring considerably because well, this is just kind of ridiculous. 
Also, more functional changes, like adding a better height adjustment mechanism that isn't just a thumb screw and sliding up and down this kind of pretty tight and notchy sort of track. Maybe a, a thumb turn with a, a gear mechanism. I don't know though, I'm still working on that one for sure. As for the test modes, what I've got so far is the force curves, both press and release, with actuation points. Something like what Cherry does for their switches with those release and actuation points, along with force curves that kind of look like this. Then an actuation point test. This is mostly for HE and analog boards where you can tell the software what height the switch is set to, and then it'll find how far down it actually is, and then you can change the set point and repeat the test as, and, as, as many times as you like until you get a graph that will look something like this. And the actual and set heights will be marked out so you can see how accurate any given board or switch is. Then of course there is a latency test mode where it will move right just above the actuation point and then trigger the switch as many times as you want from there. In theory, this should be more accurate and repeatable than the latency tool, although to be clear, the latency tool is still decently accurate, and I am still going to continue to use it regardless of this tool existing. As for mice, it currently has two sort of combined test modes. Sadly, the speed of this motor is fixed, and it's fixed rather slowly as well, so I can't do things like mouse sensor acceleration tests. But I can do switch force, actuation point and latency, and if, if you take the assembly off and put a mouse sort of up against the load cell, it should be able to do sensor latency and at least some basic accuracy. That's one that I'm sort of least sure about at the moment, but it, it's also sort of possible in theory. While there's probably hours worth of stuff that I could go over, that's pretty much what I've got so far. I really want these features for my testing, but I would very much like to hear from other peripheral viewers to know what sort of tests you would like to see possible, so please, please, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be keeping an eye on them and do my best to incorporate your suggestions into the tool before making this sort of launch official. Of course, if you're interested in this sort of peripheral testing tool, you can of course hit the subscribe button and head to osrtt.com uh, and put your email in the like newsletter bit at the bottom. Uh, I, I, I do not send anywhere near as many emails as I probably should. In fact, I only really do that when there's either big issues that I want to correct or new tool launches. So uh, drop your email there and if you are interested in this, you should get an email when this thing actually comes out. Uh, you can also email me at inbox at techtimgb.com if you have any direct suggestions. Uh, but yeah, otherwise that's kind of it. If you want to check out my other open source tools, I'll leave a playlist in the end cards and you can check out osrtt.com. That's linked in the description. And otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you in advance for all of your help. And yeah, we'll see you on the next video.